All right, uh, so let me pause and give an overview of, of where we've been and where we're going, uh, especially for superheated vapors, all right? For superheated vapors, uh, we can determine properties by what we've been doing, uh, the superheated vapor tables, right? Table A6, table A13, uh, A6 if it's water, H2O, right, steam, uh, table A13 if it's refrigerant, um, all right, so that is one method. Now, we're about to come up with a new method. Um, and this could be for other uh, substances, right? Not just water and refrigerant, but for gases. And that's the ideal gas equation. That's for the ideal gas uh, approximation, right? And that is, and there's a few different, um, a few different ways to write this equation. We're going to do P lowercase v equals RT. P lowercase v equals RT, right? Pressure times the specific volume, right? Big V divided by mass equals RT. R is the gas constant. We'll talk about T is the absolute temperature. Um, so we could, if we can assume, if we can approximate some of these as an ideal gas, and that's kind of another thing, should we? approximate these as an ideal gas, then we can use PV equals RT. Uh, remember, for the uh, property tables, we, we kind of need two pieces of information. We can find the other. Same thing right here. If if we know the pressure and specific volume, then, then we can get the temperature. That R is just a constant. If we know the pressure and the temperature, we can get the specific volume. The, you know, the volume and the temperature, we can get the, the pressure. Uh, so th that's another way that we're about to get to. And then in one more section after this one, uh, we're going to take the ideal gas equation and make it a little bit better and correct it with a compressibility factor and we'll say PV equals Z RT where Z is the um, compressibility factor uh, and so that's a better approximation so uh, this one is best the, the, the property tables are best um, those are the most accurate uh, then second most accurate would be the ideal gas with compressibility, and the least accurate would be the ideal gas without any uh, compressibility factor. So that's where we're going. Um, we can get um, some of these properties in different ways. Now, some of them, maybe there are no, no tables, like if we're talking about oxygen, if we're talking about some, some, other, some things other than water, maybe there are no tables, um, and so we just need PV equals RT. Um, so, but sometimes we can, we can have, you know, three different options to get. And again, these are for gases. These are for gases. If it is a saturated liquid or saturated mixture, um, we sh definitely should not use the ideal gas equation or the ideal gas equation with compressibility. All right. So anyway, here's the ideal gas equation of states because those property tables are bulky and y y you see how much how much room it takes up just to get the property tables for water and then would are we going to have property tables for all these other different uh, substances we can yes and we do have some but there are other options that are somewhat accurate and these are equations of state an equation that describes the relationships between properties of a substance so the ideal gas equation is pv equals rt let's talk about this this is pressure Pressure times specific volume equals the gas constant for that substance times the temperature. This has to be the absolute temperature, right? In Kelvin. If we're in English units, Rankin. If we're in, sorry, Kelvin. If we're in SI units, Rankin. If we're on English units, not Celsius. You will get the wrong answer if you plug in the temperature in Celsius. All right. So R is the gas constant. This is in table A1. Table A1. Let's go there. Let's go there. We haven't used table A1 yet. Very beginning. All right. So table A1. The gas constant right here for air, uh, for water right here. Uh, so some, some of these, you know, ammonia, carbon dioxide, 
helium, nitrogen, oxygen. Uh, so that's the R gas constant. Look at the units there. Kilojoules per kilogram K. But they, ha they help us out here. They help us out here. This is also the same as in kPa meters cubed per kilogram K. kPa meters cubed per kilogram K. So this is generally what I plug in because I know I have pressure on the left-hand side of my equation and my pressure is probably in kPa. Uh, in English units, we would look at table A1E. Right? In English units, we would look at table A1E. All right, R, here we go, R is the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass, where R universal is um, 8.31447, uh, and M is the molar mass. Let's write that in our um, uh, notes. Yeah, there we go. R is also the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass for that substance. Uh, but we won't have to use this if we, we just look at table 1, A1, and get that gas constant for that uh, substance. All right. So units going to be a little tricky, but if we, know the, if we plug in the pressure and plug in the V, and if we know the R for that substance, then we can just rearrange and solve for T. Or if we know the P and the T, we can solve for V. If we know the V and the T, we can solve for P, right? Okay, many times we're going to kind of go from maybe one state to a next. So if we have something where the, if it's a closed system, which is all we're looking at right now, closed system means there's no mass going in or out, so the mass is constant. Uh, it is changing states. And we are assuming, and we are assuming ideal gases. Uh, and we're assuming ideal gas PV is equal to RT. And if we divide through by T, this is equal to R. So, um, as long as the mass is not changing, then this PV over T is going to be a constant value of R. This PV over T is going to be a constant value of R. So that means the P at state 1, the V at state 1, the T at state 1 equals the P at state 2, the V at state 2, the T at state 2. So, so maybe th this is a shortcut. If we don't have that equation, it's okay. We would have eventually gotten there by doing PV equals RT for state 1 and PV equals RT for state 2. But seeing this and shortening and using this shortcut just kind of means we don't have to use that R value twice. Uh, we'd probably end up multiplying it in one case and dividing it by one case. So, uh, you know, if we know everything about the first state and we know some things about the second state, we can find uh, what's unknown about the, the third state. So, only use this equation. It's a shortcut. Only use it for ideal gases, not for mixtures, not, not, not for saturated vapor, saturated liquid, or saturated mixtures, only for an ideal gas. And if it is closed, if it is a fixed mass. All right, if it is closed and the tank is rigid, so I'll, I'll give us another shortcut. If the tank, if it is a rigid tank, what does a rigid tank mean? It, it means the volume is constant. Then we can divide this V out of both sides. If the mass and volume are constant on both sides, then P1, T1 equals P2, T2. So here's another shortcut that we can only use for ideal gas closed rigid tank. Ideal gas closed rigid tank. And you know, it's, it's okay. Many times if you don't use the shortcut, you 
you, you'll still get the same answer. The shortcut makes it quicker. Sometimes, if you don't use the shortcut, then you just have to say, actually, I'm not told anything about the volume of this tank. Let me just assume a volume of one. You kind of end up multiplying it one way somewhere and dividing it by in another location. All right, so anyway, two shortcuts to use for ideal gases if it's closed and ideal gases if it's closed and rigid. All right, but we're talking about ideal gases. I mean, is water vapor even an ideal gas? You know, I don't think of water as a gas and maybe especially an ideal gas. Uh, well, and, and I don't have this open, but if we look at figure 345, on page 137, and I don't have it to, sh to show you, but it'll show you the error in assuming it's an ideal gas. And you could see that at very low pressures, anything lower than 10 kPa, uh, then yes, uh, it's safe to assume water is an ideal gas. But at higher pressures, maybe. At higher pressures, let's say sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, so for like uh, air conditioning applications, where we're not talking about high uh, pressure or low temperature um, we're not talking about high pressure situations, then yes, um, we can assume it's an ideal gas. But for steam power plants, no, then maybe we shouldn't assume it's an ideal gas. My thing is the further away from being a saturated vapor the better, right? If it's close to being a liquid, close to being a mixture, uh, we should not use ideal gas. And I can't emphasize this enough, is if it is a mixture, do not use ideal gas equations. It, you will get completely different and completely wrong, huge error in your problems, okay? But a very low pressure, high temperature, um, something that's not close to condensing, um, then yes, uh, we can we can probably assume it's an ideal gas, and we'll, and we'll do some calculations where we'll we will look at some property tables and compare it. You know, look at table A six and get its value from table A six. But what if we had used PV equals RT? What value would we get? And we can we can compare, see how accurate, and it'll be different for different situations. See how accurate we are. All right.